My name is Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today's lecture will be about rational numbers. Um, in the previous lecture, I was talking about um, integer numbers and how they evolved from natural numbers and operation of uh, addition. Um, we had to make this complete, we had to make this set uh, a group, a mathematical group, which means we have to reverse our operation at will. Um, and that what makes it actually a, a beautiful, harmonious, symmetrical. Now, um, let's move just one step forward. So let's assume we have our integer numbers. And uh, uh, we have an operation of multiplication. Well, exactly as in the case of natural numbers and addition as not being fully sufficient to make the whole theory complete. What I'm telling right now is the operation of uh, multiplication as far as integer numbers <coughs> is not complete <coughs> Excuse me. because you cannot inverse it always. And you cannot, inverse operation cannot be applied to any um, integer numbers as we have. Well, you can, for instance, multiply 8 by 3 to get 24. And in this case, you can inverse operation, which means you can divide basically 24 by 3, getting 8. But can you divide, let's say, 5 by 7? No, you cannot. So the reverse operation is not always possible. And that was actually makes people mad. Mathematicians don't like to not be able not be able to do something. So, how can they solve the problem like this? Exactly as before. As far as addition was concerned, mathematicians have invented negative numbers and zero. As far as multiplication is concerned, mathematicians had exactly the same thing to do. They have invented new numbers called rational numbers. Uh, as far as notation is concerned, well, we know that among integer numbers, we cannot divide 3 by 5. So they said, fine, OK. We invent a brand new number, which is called 3 over 5. Purely abstract. Maybe it doesn't even occur in nature. doesn't really matter. But what we can say is that among all rational numbers, which can be represented as a pair of integer numbers, with some divider in between. I mean, I can represent it this way, or I can represent it in, I don't know. This way, doesn't matter how I represent the object using some numerical notation. The matter is that this becomes a new element of a new set, set of rational numbers. So forget about practicality. If you can find some natural numbers, like counting sheep or something like this, you, all, you, you, you always have a problem finding negative numbers. And obviously, you will find some problem finding in nature, in the real life, some rational numbers. You really have to go far to justify their existence from, from the practicality. You can, but it's not really easy. It's not worth counting. But in mathematics, it's very simple. You just invent a brand new abstract object, um, and now we can research the properties of this thing. Again, the point of that thing, of, of, of this lecture actually, was uh, to explain that certain theories are developed just based on its own theoretical necessities, and maybe um, uh, find much later some practical application. All right, so in this case, we have introduced brand new numbers, which together with operation of multiplication uh, make the whole set of numbers a group. Remember, we were using groups as, uh, as an example of a mathematically symmetrical and harmonious object. Group have, groups have unit element, if you remember, which being applied to any element leaves it alone, basically, as, what, as it was before. In multiplication, we have number one, which plays this role of unit element. Um, in group theory, we always had a reverse operator, which being applied uh, to any number, 
uh, uh, if you apply the operation with uh, the element of the group and its inverse, you will get this unit element. Well, among rational numbers, obviously, if you have one rational number, you can always have another rational number, which being operated upon will give you the unit. Well, there are some exceptions, actually, when um, the denominator is equal to zero. Let's just not talk about this. This is a little difficulty uh, in our theory. Um, and by the way, this little difficulty also by itself caused lots of uh, different branches from the theory, which we have kind of used to. Um, so um, this thing makes the rational numbers a nice group. And um, well, basically, uh, that was the subject of this particular lecture. We are introducing new numbers, we call it rational. We have notation how to write them. And the necessity was to make the multiplication complete. Now, just as a um, kind of interesting example of uh, how the whole theory was developed a little bit further, let's consider the notation. As you know, we represent our numbers in decimal system. So sometimes, instead of using p over q as a representation of a uh, rational number where p and q are uh, integers, sometimes we're using decimal system with a decimal point. So let's say we have this. This is also a rational number. But um, is it general enough representation to write down all possible rational numbers which uh, exist in, uh, in our theory? Well, not quite. It's not really very easy. Let's start from a very simple example. Let's say you have one third. This is a rational number. No doubts about that. But now let's talk about its representation in our decimal uh, system. Well, obviously, this is 3, 3, 3, 3, etc. It's an infinite number of 3s. Well, it's not really so nice to have an infinite number of digits to represent the number. Yes, I understand people can cut it off and say, well, approximately it's 1 third. But it's not 1 third, right? It's actually 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 over 10 to some degree. Um, so, there is a concept which uh, mathematicians came up with which uh, actually allows to make this notation more uh, well, finite. Um, here is a very interesting story about rational numbers. Whenever you take two numbers, um, two integer numbers which form a rational number and then convert it into decimal, you will always have certain um, digits repeated uh, in this particular sequence. Like in this case, three is repeated. Um, sometimes you can have a number like this, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 2 3, etc. So 1, 2, 3 is a repeated group. So as far as notation is concerned, mathematicians came up with a little bit more, well, convenient, if you wish, notation uh, using the decimal system. They can have something like this. Which basically means that 1, 2, 3 repeats infinite number of times. Well, it's a notation, right? I mean, it's a written representation of some um, abstract concept. Whatever this rational number is, it means that 1, 2, 3 is actually repeated many, many times. And together, they form a rational number. But here's a very interesting story. You see, these are periodically repeated sequences of 1, 2, 3. And it turns out, and it's a very interesting theorem actually, and not very easy one, that any rational number can be represented in decimal system as a, some kind of annotation with some periodically repeated um, uh, numbers, sequences of numbers. Um, it's as, as I was saying, it's not really a very easy theorem, um, but still provable. And that's what actually differentiates 
rational numbers from irrational numbers, which will appear in one of the, will be introduced in one of the next lectures. Um, so basically, the periodic decimal fractions are representation of all the rational numbers, and that's very important. Um, let me just give you a very interesting, uh, funny in a way, example of uh, of properties of this type of representation, periodic representation of uh, rational numbers. If you want to represent one sevenths, it will be one four two eight five seven in period. Well, if you take two sevens, it will be two eight five seven one four in period. Well, notice that it's exactly the same digits here, and uh, you have to start two eight five seven one four. It's like a cyclical uh, representation of the same thing. Three sevens will be. You start from four, I think. Is that right? Or from or, or from five? Mm. From four. Four, two, eight, five, seven, one. Yeah, that's what will be. So again, it's the same numbers. You can actually put it in a circle if you wish. One, four, two, eight, five. Seven, and you always go into this direction. So one sevens is one four two eight five seven in period. Two sevens is two eight five seven one four in period. Three sevens is four two eight five seven one in period, etc. So all these sevens up to six sevens are represented using the same numbers in the same cyclical sequence. Well. Try to prove that this is really true. You can check it out as the first, but um, here's an interesting theory. If the number of digits in the periodicity, in the periodic representation, in this case six, is one less than the, than the denominator, then you will have this property. Um, well, I don't know, it's kind of a strange thing, but that's the property of. Uh, uh, periodic representation of uh, rational numbers. Um, it would be really very interesting if you think about how to prove this theorem. And uh, maybe someday we will uh, organize some kind of a lecture about this particular pro pro problem. Um, up until then, well, good luck with this particular thing, and uh, see you next lecture.